Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're going to be talking about Jordan Howard, uh, the running back from the Chicago Bears. Uh, had a very big rookie season, uh, caught a lot of eyebrows and stuff like that. He also was a guy that I profiled in my 2016 NFL Draft Analytics Guide and had him as the third best running back in that class. Uh, nobody listened to me. Nobody actually bought that guy that much anyways. Uh, but I'm feeling vindicated because... I'm not saying I was the only one on Jordan Howard, but there were a lot of things pointing towards success with him. Uh, you know, I wanted to profile, again, a lot of running backs that uh, were day two sort of guys, day three sort of guys that the NFL just missed on, whiff, whiffed on, uh, and just kind of show that it doesn't matter where you're drafted. It doesn't really matter where you played in terms of your school. What matters is production, athleticism, and, of course, what you put up on film. Uh, and we're mainly just going to look at analytics because I don't have a ton of time to just get into his film yet. Uh, but the bottom line is, is there was a lot of things pointing towards Jordan Howard becoming a very successful player based on analytics. And is one of the main reasons why people, when they do running back evaluation, they need to be looking at the analytics because it can tell you a lot and give you a lot of ideas as to what to look at and what prospects to, uh, to, to scout more. Uh, when it comes to their sort of data and their sort of profile and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the metrics we're going to be using today is total offensive mark share production. Uh, if, if you guys aren't familiar with that term, it essentially, essentially takes the total offensive yardage of a running back. Uh, so if a running back had 1,000 yards, which is passing plus rushing yards, and divided by the team offense, which is, say, 4,000 yards, uh, then that running back had 25% total offensive mark share production. What you do with that number though, is you compare it to every single running back since the 1969 NFL draft class, which in particular my running back data set has about 1700 plus running backs. So it's a lot of running backs. Uh, you compare to all those running backs in terms of what their performances were, and then you're able to figure out, okay, where did all the all pro running backs test in terms of their mark share production? Where did the Pro Bowl running backs test? Where did the, where did the you know, all those kind of guys, starters, all that kind of stuff. So with all that stuff out of the way, we're also going to look at athleticism data. Athleticism data deals with explosive lower body strength score, speed score, and the flexibility score. Explosive lower body strength is a vertical and the broad jump measured against mass density, uh, which basically deals with how explosive they are in terms of their hips uh, and their knees. Uh, then we're also going to look at the speed score, which is the 40-yard dash measured against mass density. And then we're going to finish it off with the flexibility score, which is a short shell slash free cone measured against mass density, which is weight divided by height, of, uh, of course. And uh, the flexibility score essentially determines how flexible a running back is. And in many ways, it determines the type of leverage that a running back can uh, generate in terms of their ability to dip their hips, uh, dip their ankles, stuff like that. And also just their overall short area quickness in terms of the fluidity and stuff like that. So with all that out of the way, let's get to Jordan Howard in terms of how he looked in terms of college and uh, his athleticism. So starting out with Jordan Howard in terms of his college production, uh, he had an 81.52 total offensive mark share production score, uh, which based on my data hits the five-time Pro Bowl threshold and three-time Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to running backs, basically meaning that the majority of five-time Pro Bowl running backs and three-time Pro Bowl running backs uh, since the 1969 NFL Draft class scored at least 69 or higher, 52 or higher, and in Jordan Howard's case, he's an 81.52 or higher type of guy. Uh, so he basically was a Pro Bowl production running back coming out of college, uh, which you may or may not be surprised by that, but that's just how productive he was. Um, he pretty much uh, was that type of guy coming out of college. And then you add to it his athleticism, uh, which based on his athleticism, he had a 83.43 uh, explosive lower body strength score, a 74.3 uh, nine or 09 uh, speed score and a 50.87 flexibility score. Uh, based on all those numbers, he pretty much hits the minimum threshold for all pro and pro bowl level uh, outcomes. And on top of that, when it comes to the running back position, what I think people are not very, you know, everybody talks about the running back position in terms of athleticism. They go, uh, you need to look at the three cone. That's the only thing you need to look at. Or there's other people who talk about, oh, well, you need to look at the speed score. Speed score is the only thing that matters. And, oh, no, you need to be looking at the vertical and the broad jump. That's it. Well, nobody says that. But when it comes to the running back position, 
when you look at every single running back in terms of success outcomes, it's not about being a great all-around athlete. It's not about being great in one particular metric like the short shell and the three cone. Uh, it's not about being great in terms of just speed. Uh, it's not about being just great in terms of explosiveness. It's about having one athletic skill set uh, that is better than everybody else. You know, it's about having something that is above average, whether you are above average explosive, which is really good in terms of ZBS schemes, you know, your ability to explode through contact, break tackles, stuff like that, you know, how strong you are as a running back. Uh, whether you're talking about speed, which is self-explanatory. If you have a back that's just a speed back, like a Chris Johnson or a CJ Spiller, those guys win with just plain out running fools. You know, they're not very strong, but they can outrun people and they win that way. And then of course you have flexibility, uh, which deals with guys like Frank Gore, uh, Matt Forte. These are guys that, in general, um, are able to outflex guys. You know, they're able to kind of, uh, you know, they have really good short area quickness. They're able to kind of dip their pads, get lower than everybody else, and as a result, they're able to get more yardage. So um, there's no one size fits all type of athleticism when it comes to the running back position. And I'm surprised that more data people don't get this. <laughs> Uh, you just need to have above average athleticism in either one trait, this trait, or the other trait. And in Jordan Howard's case, his main athleticism trait that was above average was his explosion trait. Uh, he basically had an elite level athleticism trait in terms of ex his explosiveness. He had above average speed. He didn't have uh, speed indicative of a special running back, but he didn't need to have that because he had the really good explosiveness trait. And in terms of flexibility, he at least was above average in terms of his flexibility because he's not the most flexible running back ever, but he is above average. So when you look at Jordan Howard in terms of athleticism traits, he has, again, the marks of a potential Pro Bowl running back. Uh, and I don't, you know, we'll get to his NFL production next, but the bottom line is, is you look at this running back coming out of college. And again, if you are a GM and I tell you that this running back, Jordan Howard, has Pro Bowl level production, has Pro Bowl level athleticism traits, you just draft that guy in, in the round five, you know, day three, essentially. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why NFL teams do what they do. I just know that based on data, Jordan Howard uh, was a very highly productive running back with great athleticism traits and the NFL just didn't seem to care about that. And because they didn't care, in 2016, Jordan Howard, uh, based on his mark share production at the NFL level, had a 94.43 overall mark share production score. Compared to 2016 running backs, uh, he was essentially the sixth most productive running back in 2016. Uh, this coming from a day three back is crazy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, but uh, this happens, man. This happens. But the bottom line is Jordan Howard had a very, very good rookie season in terms of his uh, offensive mark share production. He probably would have been even better if he was able to get more carries at the very beginning of the year as well. Uh, and based on his overall data, I would not be surprised if he continues to be a top five, top ten running back. Uh, again, he has all the athleticism tra uh, traits of a Pro Bowl running back, has a production of a Pro Bowl running back, has proven to be a bell cow in college. And so far, I had a very, very good rookie season. Um, so I would say that in the future for Jordan Howard, you're, you're going to see a guy that uh, may not be an all-pro running back. Because again, based on his marks here production coming out of college, he didn't really hit the all-pro uh, level of production. And just to give you some perspective, that all-pro threshold at college, we're talking about guys like Marcus Allen. We're talking about guys like Barry Sanders, Adrian Peterson, um, you know, Jim Brown. Uh, you know, we're talking about elite Hall of Fame level running backs. Jordan Howard does not quite have that production, but he still has very, 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 very good production, at least second tier, you know, first tier Pro Bowl level production, essentially. So I would expect very good things for him in the future. And again, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with uh, anybody that you know. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.